see the motivation for cyber attacks. This includes obstruction of information and denigration in the reputation of the country. Next is denial in providing public services. Next, smashing up legal interest. Next, counter international cyber security measures. Next, retardation of decision making process. And finally, abatement of public confidence. We'll see one after the other. Obstruction of information. Whenever there is a need for specific data or information from any organization, from any websites or databases, the main aim of the hacker is to block the access to the important information. They do it with authorized user's identity and further they try to compromise the capability of the organization for the upcoming events. Second, denigration in the reputation of the country. Here, the motivation for cyber attack is to degrade the reputation of the organization in turn and further the country. Every country has the competencies due to the technological development. This improves the productivity and the value of the country among other developing countries. To damage this, large scale cyber attacks are launched through the networks. Third one, denial in providing public services. An attacker can cause disruption in any public domains such as the stock markets, banking, airline services and railway services by blocking access to valuable information for any authorized users in their organization. Next is smashing up legal interest. The well-recognized organization's networks are smashed to get the benefit of their favored organization. This is one of the prime and the known motives of cyber attack. To deal with such scenarios, the well-defined security goals must be present in the organization. Counter international cyber security measures. The hackers who initiate the cyber attacks mainly concentrate to challenge the initiatives taken by the international cyber security community to stop and prevent the cyber attacks. The attackers do this by hiding their malicious code within some normal program to bypass the security scan and also they increase the complexity of the attack patterns. Next is the retardation of decision making process. In emergency services like military and other government services, cyber attacks play a major role. It causes delay in the decision making process like activation of a life support system in the hospital sometimes even which may cause death of patients and the tactical deployments in military defeats are some of the examples of this type. The last one is the abatement of public confidence. Public generally lose their confidence about the safety and security and trustworthiness on the organization or on the government due to the stealing or hacking of their personal or private information. So we saw clearly the motive behind all these types of cyber attacks. Cyber attacks can be classified based on the following. First, based on purpose. Second, legal classification. Third, based on severity of involvement. Four, based on scope. And number 5 based on network types. Based on purpose. The attacks based on the purpose are reconnaissance attack, access attack and denial of service attack. We will see one after the other. What is a reconnaissance attack? Reconnaissance attack can also be termed as the system mapping services and unauthorized detection. Reconnaissance attacks, they take place in any of the forms listed below. For example, 
It may be packet sniffing, scanning the port, sweeping the port, queries regarding the internet information. We will see what it is. Packet sniffing. It is a unique gadget used to spy the traffic between the computers inside the network. It involves capturing of data and addressing them to alternate sources or machines where they are saved for future analysis. Next is the scanning the port. It consists of continuous stream of messages sent by an attacker attempting to break into the computer to examine which computer network services are associated with a well-known port number the computer provides. Next is sweeping the ping. IP addresses, these are the addresses given uniquely to every device and IP addresses and mapping to live host are done by the attacker using this type of scanning technique. Next is the queries regarding the internet information. The cyber attackers, they use the domain name system in short, we call it as DNS and these queries to ascertain the owner of a domain and the address assigned to the same. The next level of attack is access attack. The unapproved attacker generates access to a device for which they have no authorization to access. The one does not have authorization hacks the data and creates a tool which takes advantage of some weakness of the application which is under attack. Basically services that verify the authentication such as the file transfer protocol and internet services are capitalized through well-known vulnerabilities to obtain access to the email and other confidential and sensitive data of the company, they are put under this particular attack. The access attacks are listed as follows. Attacks on secret code, utilization of trust port, then port redirection, man in the middle attack, social engineering, and phishing. Attacks on secret code. A user without access or authority tries to hack into the account by utilizing every possible combination of passwords in a niche domain. This type of attack is also known as dictionary attack and it usually occurs in two forms such as guessing the password and resetting the password. Utilization of trust port. A trusted host or a computer is compromised by another trusted host by an unauthorized attacker to stage the attacks. Next is the port redirection. A hacker takes advantage of an established host to gain access to another host that are protected through network firewall. We will see it in later what a firewall is. Next, man in the middle attacks. This is an active eavesdropping attack where the attacker independently connects with the victim and he replays the messages between them. This type of attack is also known as Janus attack or bucket brigade attack. It makes the users to assume that the contact between them is private. Next is social engineering. Malaysia's code infects social engineering websites through SQL injection that is structured query language injection leading to any users accessing the website to become infected and may also alter the content of these websites. Next is phishing, that is the action of pretending to be a licensed uh, venture and sending some fake emails to fool users into giving up private information that may be used for theft of identity at a later point of time. Next is the denial of service attack, slowing down or crashing the system to render it slow 
or unusable is called as the denial of service attack. This involves corruption or deletion of data or information and disabling of the network system by declining the services to the known or legitimate users.